Copying and pasting here in GarageBand iOS between different projects is back. That's right, in the latest version 2.3.4, here in iOS 11.4, we can now copy and paste between two different projects here in GarageBand. And in this video, I'm gonna give you 10 tips that are gonna take your copying and pasting in GarageBand right up to the next level. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete. This is Studio Live today where I help you create, record and release your best music. Now we've got a lot to get through so I won't take too much time up the front here, but firstly, why would you want to copy and paste between tracks? Well, for me, sometimes I'm working on a track here and I'll get a part like a piano part like this, it'll be sounding okay, but then I'll go, no, I don't really think it fits, but I really like the riff, so I want to copy it and paste it over into another project. So what I'm going to show you is how we can do that here in GarageBand iOS on the iPhone or the iPad, and my 10 best tips for getting this done. So let's jump in now with tip number one. Okay, so the first tip that I have here is that the track we're pasting into, now all I've set up here is an audio recorder track with eight bars, but if we tap on the little plus in the top right here, you'll notice that this section has eight bars and it's not got the automatic set on. Anytime we're pasting into a project, set the automatic song length on because what that will do is it means that whatever we paste in here, if it's longer than eight bars, this will expand to fill more than eight bars. And I'll show you what we mean by that when we jump in to actually pasting here. Now, if you want to shortcut this process, I'll show you an extra bonus tip here. And that is if we go to our settings here and I'll go right to the top here. If you go to your default settings here, you can scroll down. And if you find the GarageBand app, you can actually go down to this option here and set automatic recording length to on. This will mean that every time you come in here to record a new track in GarageBand, then it will automatically set the length to automatic and you don't need to come in here and manually set that each and every time. Okay, so our second tip is actually doing some copying of a MIDI part. So what I'm gonna do is go into my baseball song here and we're just gonna tap and copy this one little piano section. So I'm gonna go copy and now we're gonna go out of this song completely, back to my songs. We'll jump into this test song. Now what I'm gonna do is we're gonna create a new track. I'm gonna go more sounds, and we have my classical grand piano selected here. Actually, I selected the rock organ. Let's just change that back. Classical grand, that's better. Now we can go back to our track view, and now we can paste by just tapping and tapping paste, and presto, there is our new track. And as I mentioned in the first tip, it's gone past eight bars because we had it set on automatic. So that is why we have it automatic. It's automatically made at 12 bars. And now we have our piano track in here ready to go. So that may have seemed a little bit clunky having to add that track to paste into. Well, tip number three, we're gonna show you why we don't need to do that. So let's grab this bright swelling synth and we're going to tap and copy on this audio. Now let's go back to our song here. We're gonna go into test song and we'll just go to a random spot here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tap down here below the piano and you'll see here that we have our paste option. We'll hit paste and presto, we have our bright swelling synth right here without having to add a track. So you can tap in the blank space below and paste in any item. It means you don't have to set up a track. It will create the right relevant track for that piece of audio. Okay, tip number four, and you may have picked this up already from the pasting I've already done, but where you want to paste, you need to put your playhead. So if I actually wanted to paste that synth here at bar seven, I line my playhead up, I tap down here below all these tracks again, and I hit paste, and there we go, another copy of this synth is pasted in at that location. So if you're pasting things in and they're going to the wrong spot, take a look at your playhead, make sure it's in the right position. You can just slide it with your finger to the right spot, tap, Tap again, hit paste, and there you go. It'll paste it right into place. Now, as you may know, we can change the type of instrument we want by just going into our instrument settings here and adjusting it through the settings here. But the other thing that we can do is we can actually mix and match by pasting a different instrument into a different instrument sound. So let's show you what I mean here. I'll delete this synth. Let's go back to our songs. Let's find another part in our baseball song. We'll go in here 
and we'll load up and let's just grab this organ part now. We'll tap, we'll hit copy. So we're copying an organ part. We're gonna go back to my songs. We're gonna go back to test song. We're gonna do a lot of jumping around in this video. And now if I have this set up on this synth, I'm gonna tap and gonna hit paste. And now it has put our organ sound onto this synth track. Now it's probably not gonna sound particularly good. Let's take a quick listen. Okay, it doesn't sound too bad. There you go, there's a, a cool sound. Maybe I should have used that sound instead of my organ. But it just means that you can paste directly onto any other compatible track. Now it has to be compatible, so keyboard sounds need to go on keyboards, uh, touch instruments need to go on their same touch instruments, and drama needs to go onto drama. We'll talk more about that as we move on in the video. Okay, so copying one piece of audio is cool, yeah, but I know you want more. You always want more. We can, of course, select multiple parts of the same track. So we can do that in two ways. We can just tap and drag a rectangle around like that to select multiple parts, then just tap on them, tap again and go copy. Or the other way we can do, if it's hard to do that or you can't draw that around, is we tap one, then we tap and hold and just tap the other two and it will select all three items. So we can now tap we can now go copy and we have copied all three of those items. Let's go over to our other track now, back into our test song and let's do our little trick by just tapping down here below, tapping again, hitting paste and there you go. It's brought my synth back in here. It's brought these three pieces of audio all lined up exactly as they were before and again, it did that right where my playhead was. So if I wanted to do that in a different position, I just line my playhead up, I tap, I tap paste again, and it will paste it into that new position. But wait, there is more. What if we want to copy from multiple tracks? Well, that's easy enough to do as well. Let's do our same thing here with all of these backing vocals. We'll tap, we'll drag our box around these four separate vocal tracks. Now we're gonna tap, we're gonna tap again, we're gonna go copy, and now when we go over to our song, we can go back into I've gone into the wrong one. We can go into our test track again, like so. And now we can tap in our vacant space below and hit paste and bingo, we have all of these ready to go. Now, why have they put them over here? Because of my playhead. We've talked about this before. We'll go undo again. We'll go back to the start here. We'll tap, we'll hit paste. There we go. They're right there at the start of the track. Now, this track is gonna sound pretty interesting because I've kind of put audio everywhere, but this is really just to demonstrate how we can do this and send some of our audio from one track to another. Now I've realized I've kind of jumped ahead and already done this by doing an audio recorder on the last track, but let's just do another one here. Let's do this guitar sound just so that we can see that even a guitar amp sim sound, if we copy it from this track, we can actually come over to our new track, go to test song, and then go to the bottom here, tap, tap again and hit paste and it's going to paste in our sound with all of our amp settings. And that's the other really handy thing that we have here is that any of the settings that we've dialed in when we use this method are going to follow us over to this track. So it means that if you've added some pedals or you've added some other specific sounds onto these tracks, then they will come with you um, over to your new track, which is super handy. Okay, for tip number nine, I've moved into a different project here because I wanted to show you what happens sometimes with an audio track like this vocal. So let's select this vocal and we're gonna tap, we're gonna go copy and let's go over to our test track, which we have here. We'll do our usual paste, we'll tap, we'll hit paste and you can see a problem here. It has not preserved our gaps. It has just pushed all the audio together. So I've found that there's a bit of an imperfection here. We'll just undo that, which is when we copy an edited audio file like this, it's just gonna put all of those bits together and we don't actually want that. But as always, there is a workaround here and we're gonna use our old friend Merge. If you haven't checked out my Merge video, uh, it's a pretty cool function that is a very, very useful. So we just tap on the track. Now we're gonna tap on the microphone icon here and we're gonna tap Merge. Now it's gonna select just this one track here because we don't wanna merge it with any other tracks. So we're gonna tap on the merge button. It'll duplicate the song, it'll merge that track. And what it's actually going to do is normalize, which just means it'll increase the volume to the level that it's going to be matching. And look at this, it has actually preserved our gaps. So all we need to do now is tap on this one and go copy and then come over to our test track again, which will go down to here. And then when we go in and we tap and we go paste, then it's going to paste in our track with our gaps included so that when we play it back, it's going to... Secret safe. 
have our nice little gap in there in the track, which is super awesome. Okay, so we're at number 10, and I could probably go on and on and give you some more tips, but I thought 10 was probably enough for this video. Now, can you use drummer and copy and paste? Well, of course you can. Let's go into drummer. We'll go to acoustic drummer. Now, I'm going to add my man Anders here. Now, you might be wondering, why am I adding this in the, the track that we're going to paste into first? Let's just delete all of Anders here. Well, what I'm going to do is I've got a track over here, which is Kyle. Now, I don't mind Kyle. Let's go back here. We'll go to baseball. I don't mind Kyle, but Kyle uses a, a natural sounding kit, and I actually want to grab this chunk of Kyle. That sounds a bit disturbing, but let's copy this bit of Kyle and go to our My Songs, and we're going to go into our test song. Now, what I can actually do is I could tap down here and go paste, and it would create a new drummer with Kyle doing his thing. But what I can also do, I'll leave Kyle down there, I can also go to this track, tap in this track and go paste, and what it's going to actually do is it's going to paste in that exact same beat. You can see that they match there perfectly. What is the difference? Well, you can see it's a different drum kit. So if you have ever wanted to use a different drummer's pattern with a different drummer's kit, you can do this. Now, the possibilities are endless. You can go nuts. You can swap and change some of these with some of the percussion kits, some of the, the drum and bass kind of kits and the electronic kits. Now, some won't work perfectly because they won't have a matching kit piece, but when the acoustic with acoustic, they're going to match up fine. So let's now listen to the original Kyle here, which is these drums. They sound like this. And now let's listen to those same drums, but played on the hard hitting kit by Anders. So there you go, a different tone in the kick drum, a different sound, a bit more reverb. It's giving you that hard hitting kit, but giving you the Kyle beat. So if you wanna mix and match your drummer beats, that's a pretty cool way to do it. And yes, it's semi related to copying and pasting here in GarageBand. So there you have it, the very cool world of copying and pasting between projects. I hope you found something useful in one of these 10 tips or hopefully a few of them. Now, a special shout out to one of my viewers, Ponk80, who provided a lot of the inspiration for some of these tips. He loves to find all of these different ways to hack around and that drummer one was especially a cool one that he showed me a while ago that I wanted to make sure we included here in this video. Thanks again for watching. If you've got comments, questions or suggestions, leave those down below and I'll see you on the next video. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this video. And of course, we've got two more videos linked down below you can check out. You can also subscribe by clicking on the Studio Live Today icon. And as always, you can head to studiolivetoday.com for more audio goodness.